Hello there. Um, welcome to another episode. Episode roughly 31. A follow on from my last episode on creatine and body composition, and whatever other tangents I went on. So, this episode, <laughs> I want to say it is going to be short. I really, I want nothing to say. Um, I'm going to talk about creatine and brain function. Sorry, quick tangent. This is what will increase the length. I was going to wear the same brand of last last episode for those of you who don't watch I was wearing like a uh, long sleeve shirt from Goodwin Smith well quite a cool thing as a nutritionist for my tour I basically got a sponsorship with a sort of clothing or mainly a shoe company Goodwin Smith no longer sponsored so uh, don't go and buy their stuff <laughs> uh, yeah, really good absolutely freaking love their shoes got some of them on now uh, sent me loads of shoes for my tour and then they they started doing these quite nice fitting long sleeve tops and then I was wearing it and then I looked back at the video I was like oh quite like the the cut of that top I'll wear a few of the others and then I haven't I'm never now wearing a shirt anyway weird tangent yeah, it's mainly Gymshark or Vanquish you know if you need a new you know just if you just want to bring the IQ we're talking about creatine brain function cognitive function psychomotor uh, function, uh, memory, intelligence, reasoning. If you want to increase the average uh, of your sponsored athletes, uh, give me a call. I'm always open. <laughs> anyway, vegetarians aren't very clever. <laughs> That's probably a bad time to pause. No. So there's some cool studies I want to just mention today. One that I've always mentioned because it's just funny to mention it. Vegetarians, because they consume less creatine, have lower creatine stores. So if you supplement a vegetarian, you get much more profound effects than if you supplemented an omnivore, a meat eater. And uh, it's really interesting. It makes sense, obviously. But when you start seeing the fact that creatine has a, an impact on the brain, and you start to see significant differences in uh all these different areas of brain function, it's just interesting. Uh, you know, there's plenty of very, very intelligent vegetarians out there, but they're not doing themselves a favor by the looks of things, and therefore they should probably supplement with creatine whilst trying to save the planet or whatever, save their little furry friends or feathery friends, etc. <laughs> Uh, right, so creatine, I spoke about concussion in the last episode, and which is obviously within the brain region and the effects it has there. And basically, it, it's super interesting for me from the point of view of creatine in, in times where your brain function might be impaired, stress, exercise, fatigue, and lack of sleep. Now, lots of you out there, uh, parents, people who have worked really hard, students, anyone who's done loads of studying, whatever, will have had those times where you're, you've sacrificed sleep, but you want to maintain brain function or improve brain function. And th this is why this area sort of really interests me. And again, it's just another thing. I I'm not going to talk in any great depth about Alzheimer's because uh, the, the, it's, it's in animal models mostly. And uh, but it's just interesting. If you have a history of Alzheimer's in your family, it might be pertinent that when <clears throat> someone gets to 40 or 50 or whatever, and I'm sorry that you are then within the older population, the aging population, I think within Sarah's, she did the lecture for MNU on elderly populations. And lots of the research is 50 plus. Now I know there'll be lots of, like, I'm, like, it's not a lifetime away until I'm 50. And like I said in the last episode, I'm still a kid. Uh, I probably will still be acting like a kid at 50. But what's it called? You're only as old as the women you feel or something like that. Uh, so, so, 50 year olds, you are in the elderly population, I believe you are classed within. So, that's not a slight in any way, shape or form. Not I'm not ageist. But yes, like like I said with my mum, I started su getting her to supplement with creatine. And, and within his Alzheimer's, I will just say this for anyone because it probably hits home harder for those of you who are unfortunate to have someone in your family who is already suffering, that in late stage Alzheimer's, 
um, there starts to become deposits of creatine that are seen as a as a probable negative. So I would, you know, as with most things that I talk about, consult a professional before just jumping in. There are some instances where pff, no pre-existing issues, you're young, you're fit, you're healthy, no history of, you know, whatever within your family, uh, and you can just in, implement lots of the interventions that I mentioned. But things like this, be careful. Uh, but if you get in there early, there can be some benefits, potentially, likely, I would say. Right, so I wrote down one study, actually, uh, Av, Avgerinos, um, which is one of the ones I will link you to, martin-mcdonald.com forward slash EP31. If, if this is episode 31, please do the work. Go and look. What episode is this? Use that number if it's not 31 because I can't be expected to remember. But I wrote down this study <clears throat> um, just because it's a systematic review of randomized control trials. Very good. For those of you not big on research, basically some, someone's gone away and looked at randomized control trials, which again are studies that we can have a bit more faith in than observational studies because they've tried to control for variables and um, we can look a little bit more at cause and effect. And then we take lots of studies and we try to find studies that have similar methods, uh, so homogenous data sets. So they've used similar people with similar testing methods, with uh, similar interventions and controls. And then we can try and pull their data and come out with uh, meta-analyses. And then, so in this instance, it's a systematic review, so we're not looking too much at numbers per se, where, where you would in a meta-analysis, but we're just looking at more of the body of evidence. So looking at a single study is never that great. And what I try to do is when I talk to you about some studies, I will pick a study that I believe suits the whole body of evidence. I don't have an agenda. You need to bear in mind if someone quotes you a study, Sometimes that'll be in a cell culture. Sometimes it'll be in a rat. And it, it won't be what the body of evidence, you know, you'll get a study published out of a lab that isn't even a proper university in from a, from a country that maybe has less ethical standards than, you know, the UK, as much as the UK's got its many, many, many drawbacks, the standard of research that comes out of the UK is arguably the best in the world. You know, ups and downs. I'm not saying that because I'm from here. I'm not in the research world. I don't get any respect on that. that that's not a big up of Martin McDonald in any way, shape or form. Um, it's a big up of the many good researchers that we have in the UK. Um, and, and obviously that will be discipline specific, of course. But anyway, I'm going off on one and most of you aren't here to listen to that and you don't care. Anyway, so I just wrote down this uh reference because it wasn't one that I know well myself. But it just... it. The effect of creating supplementation on cognitive function of healthy individuals, systematic review of randomized control trials. And it's just interesting because it supports this area well. They talked about, you know, these findings suggest potential benefit for aging and stressed individuals. But showing improvements with supplementation with a very cheap, very low likelihood of any contraindications. It's not going to make you ill. It's not, you can't not take it when you're male or female or old or young, etc. Like, there's people out there supplementing children with creatine, and I don't see a big, you know, I maybe I shouldn't say that live on air, but, um, you know, I, met, I made this joke, you know, I don't know when I'm going to start supplementing Orly and Arlo with creatine, but if you're going to enter the egg and spoon race, you might as well be in it to win it. Like, if you're going to do something, do it well is my opinion. So when we do start taking part in sports day, we will be, um, you know, within the rules, we won't be using any um, performance enhancing drugs, you, you know, t initially. Uh, <laughs> joke, joke. We will be using performance enhancing drugs initially. No, it's a joke. It's an, it's a joke. What's it called? Three-legged race. What's the other one? Sack the sack race. Anyway, but as I mentioned in the concussion research, they are using decent doses doses of creatine in children, obviously within the realm of, you know, a medical intervention, traumatic brain injury. But um, yeah, anyway, 
Where was I? Short-term memory and intelligence or reasoning of healthy individuals improved uh, with creatine supplementation. Now, in, you know, they looked at lots of different cognitive domains and um, some of them, they didn't, you know, it was difficult to see if there was anything. But we've just got this interesting thing of like, okay, interesting, short-term memory of improvements, intelligence, IQ, reasoning, being better with creatine supplementation. It's a, you know, for for someone like myself or, you know, MNU students uh, who listen to the podcast, you guys, for, and uh, students, people wanting to study, people who have difficult, stressful jobs where they use their brain a lot, consider creatine as a supplement, even if you haven't considered it before, for performance benefits or gym benefits or whatever. There you go. So I just wanted to mention that particular study, and as I said, I will link it for you. So, yeah, going back to these uh, vegetarians and whoever, it's it's the same thing, but it's just interesting to note that these vegetarians were getting these improved effects. So better memory. I don't know if you can hear that. Sorry, I'm, I'm playing with this pencil. I'll put it down. Vegetarians resulting in significantly improved scores on their memory tests above and beyond the meat eaters who were also supplemented creatine and both groups doing better um, than placebo. Uh, or control and creating improved markers of reaction time. So, uh, and I, I, th I think actually, when I say reaction time, there, I think it's not reaction time like physical. You know, someone throws a tennis ball and you try and catch it. I think it's uh, it's something like reaction choices. So I don't know because again, this isn't my ex. I'm not super knowledgeable on these cognitive tests. But for instance, they show you a card that says the word green but is red and you have to quickly either say the color of the card or the word and um, you know it t takes a degree of uh, cognitive functioning to get the right answer and if you get it right then it, if you do it quicker or slower and stuff like that so uh, very interesting just giving you some insight into this stuff and the the main one that I kind of wanted to talk about is sleep deprivation. And I don't actually, I'm sure I've read a study in military recruits where they did this, but I cannot remember the, the outcomes, particularly other than just creatine was good. I, I'm sure it was something like they were doing marching and then they capped them at four hours sleep and then they did some stuff and they did like, you know, backwards counting tests type things. Again, I'm not an expert. And uh, it improved. But there's been other, other studies that have, that have shown very similar things. So again, supplementation with typical levels, you know, loading doses, uh, you know, four times five grams a day type stuff. And I will do a whole podcast on doses because realistically across all these different domains of sports performance and muscle gain, uh, memory, like the, all the doses are roughly similar. So I, I can cover that all in one podcast, which what I will probably do with these cream team podcasts is release them in close succession, which is why I want to keep them quite succinct, which I'm not doing very well. Uh, but with this sleep deprivation scenario, it's again, um, in, even improvements in mood state as a result of made to do some exercise, made to have, you know, have your sleep amount reduced, <laughs> said that very badly, and then go through a, a battery of tests that can test cognitive function and psychomotor function. And so again, this choice reaction time improves. Um, mood state improved, um, uh, uh, along with a variety of other things that were tested. Uh, balance, I think, is one of the ones as well in the study I'm thinking of. So it's not across the board. Every single test they do doesn't show, but definitely there's consistent findings with improved brain function. And therefore, if you are in this situation of, if you don't want to take creatine all the time, fine, if you forget, but let's tell you, you're taking your finals, man. You take creatine. It could really benefit you if you're going through a particularly stressful period. If you are, 
your kids are stopping you sleeping, your baby's teething, whatever. You're working hard at work. You're starting a new business. All the types of people that follow me and listen to this podcast, creating might be beneficial for you for all sorts of things, even maybe saving your relationships because it'll improve your mood state. That's all I wanted to say in this podcast. I tell you what, short. I'm hoping it's short and sweet. <laughs> um. Cool. So I'll be back to talk to you about elderly populations, um, sp- you know, specific research on elderly populations, uh, sports performance. Do get back to me on, I might send an email out actually to my email list. If you're not on my email list, get on there. I don't email very often, but ge- generally when there's something of interest or of note or I've got something free to give away, I send it out on there click the link in my bio on Instagram you can probably get to there go on martinmcdonald.com you can probably get there stick it in stick your email address in and um, I can send you cool stuff but yeah let me know if you've got any concerns any questions around creatine and then I'll do that listener questions or myth busting episode as well cool much love until next time goodbye goodbye